Okay guys, we are continuing solving problems from Halliday Resnick Walker. We are doing 8th edition. Okay, 8th edition. Uh, Coulomb's Law, chapter 21, problem number 17. The charges and coordinates of two charged particles held fixed in an xy plane are, the values are given q1, x1, y1, q2, x2, y2. Find the magnitude and direction of uh, the electrostatic force on particle 2 due to particle 1. At what uh, x and y coordinates should a third particle of charge q3 equal to plus 4 microcoulomb be placed such that the net force on particle 2 due to particles 1 and 3 due to particles 1 and 3 is 0. So, we are given two charged particles, Q1 and Q2. The charge values are given, Q1 is plus 3 microcoulomb, Q2 is minus 4 microcoulomb. Uh, position of Q1 is given, X coordinate is 3.5 centimeters, Y coordinate is 0 0.5 centimeters. And uh, X coordinate of Q2 is minus 2, point, 2 centimeters and Y coordinate is 1.5 centimeters. We had find out magnitude and direction of force on Q2 from Q1 in the first part. And then in the second part, we have to place Q3 somewhere, which is having a value of uh, plus uh, 4 microcoulomb. We have to place it somewhere at a location so that net force on 2 becomes 0. Okay, So that part we'll do, uh, deal with it uh, later on. First, let's find out force on 2 from 1, the magnitude and direction. Well, uh, the two forces are of opposite sign, the two charges are of opposite signs. Q1 is positive, Q2 is negative. So, there is an attractive force. So, Q2 will experience a force in this direction. I'll call this F21. Force on 2 due to 1, from 1. Now, uh, we need to find out magnitude of this force. For that, we need distance between the two charges. So, x distance between the two charges is this much and y distance between the two charges is this much. So, x distance I will call delta x and y distance I will call delta y. Now, delta x is simply this one to this one plus this one to this one. Only the magnitude, this one to this one. This one to this one is 2, magnitude wise. And then from this one to this one is 3. So 3, no, 3.5. 3.5. This is 3.5. So 3.5 plus 2. 3.5 plus 2. So that is 5.5 uh, centimeters. Remember, distances are given in centimeters. This is our delta x. And delta y is equal to delta y is equal to okay now we need uh, precisely we need this distance delta y now that is y2 this much the y coordinate of particle 2 y2 minus y1 y1 is the coordinate y coordinate of q1 so, y2 minus y1, y2 is 1.5 centimeters minus y1 is 0 0.5 centimeters. So, this implies delta y is equal to 1 centimeter. Okay, delta y is equal to 1 centimeter. So, so, we have delta x, this distance, we have delta y, this distance. Then, distance between q1 and q2, I'll call that r21, is simply under root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. You can use Pythagorean theorem here. Del under root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. Therefore, R21 is equal under root of delta x squared plus delta y squared, which is under root of 5.5 squared plus 1 squared. So, this implies R21 is equal to, now this thing we have to work out, I have already done that, it comes out to be 5.6 centimeters. 5.6 centimeters okay 5.6 centimeters so we now have the distance between the two therefore what will be the magnitude of the force f21 <coughs> is gamma q2 q1 divided by r21 squared now gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 
into Q2, Q2 is minus 4 microcoulomb, Q1 is 3 microcoulomb. We'll only take the magnitudes. So 4 microcoulomb is 4 into 10 to the power minus 6. Then 3 microcoulomb, so 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by R21 is 5.6 centimeters. So we have to convert it to meters 10 to the power minus 2 with the square there. Now this thing I have worked out F21 is equal to 34.4 newtons. This is the force two will experience from one. 34.4 newtons. Okay, 34.4 newtons. Now we need to find out direction of this F2. Direction of F2. So this is our x-axis. I'll draw a line parallel to x-axis here. If this angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. Or uh, alternate interior angles. And here in this triangle, we know what delta y is, we know what delta x is. So we'll use tan of theta. Tan of theta is delta y divided by delta x. So we'll get theta. And theta is the angle with x direction. Remember, this is x axis and this is parallel to x axis. So anything parallel to x axis is also x axis. So this is also plus x direction. Okay. So this angle theta is clockwise angle. Clockwise angle with positive direction of x axis. Clockwise angle with positive direction of x axis. And how do we get this theta? Tan of theta is equal to delta y divided by delta x. Delta y the perpendicular opposite side divided by delta x the adjacent side base. So tan of theta. Now for direction. Tan of theta is equal to delta y divided by delta x. Delta y and delta x we already know. Delta y is 1 and delta x is 5.5. So 1 divided by 5.5. So this implies theta is equal to 10.3 degrees. Therefore theta is uh, roughly equal to 10 degrees. Clockwise with plus x direction okay clockwise with plus x direction. at an angle of 10 degrees clockwise with positive direction of x axis okay is that fine so this is positive direction of x axis and this is parallel to it so this is also positive direction of x axis so this angle you can see is clockwise with positive direction of x axis which comes out to be 10.3 degrees okay 10.3 degrees now, in the uh, next part, we have to place this charge Q3, which is plus 4.4 4 microcoulomb somewhere, so that net force on Q2 becomes zero. Okay, net force on Q2 becomes zero. Now, see, Q1 is positively charged, Q2 is negatively charged, then Q3 is again positively charged. So, Q1 positive, Q2 negative, Q3 positive. So, where do we place uh, our charge? We have this diagram here. Q2 experiences an attractive force from Q1, F21 we called it. Remember this is positive, Q2 is negative. So in order to balance this force, in order to cancel out this force, because we want net force to be zero, the second force has to be in the opposite direction. And that, that second force will come from particle 3. So I'll call this F23. Force on 2 due to 3. Force on 2 due to 3. Now Q3. Remember Q2 is negative. If Q3 is also negative. We already know what is the sign of Q3. But I'm assuming if Q3 is negative. Then for force to be in this direction. We have to place Q3 here. Because this Q2 is negative. I'm assuming Q3 to be negative, then negative and negative will repel each other. So it has to be placed, Q3 has to be placed somewhere here on this line, so that repulsive force will be in this direction. But if Q2 is, Q3 is positive, positive and negative will attract each other. 
so this force has to be attracted so we have to place q3 somewhere here somewhere on this side so that q3 attracts q2 so that force f23 is in that direction we want force f23 in this direction accordingly we have to adjust the location of q3 so if q3 is also negative then q3 is to be placed on this side so that q3 repels q2 in that direction if q3 is positive which is the case in our problem if q3 is positive we have to place it somewhere here so that q3 attracts q2 okay. so we have to place q3 on that side somewhere here q3 is somewhere here q3 is somewhere here so this is its x coordinate x3 this is its y coordinate y3 now what we'll do first is we'll find out this distance from q q2 to q3 we'll find out this distance how do we find that we know these two forces are equal in magnitude net force is zero on particle two so these two have to be uh, same in the magnitude then uh, from that distance we'll find out x3 and uh, y3 so now f21 is equal to f23 f21 is equal to f23 by the way this distance between uh, two and three i'll call that f23 and i'll take r23 in centimeters okay r23 is in centimeters r23 is in centimeters because other distances are also in centimeters so i'll take r23 in centimeters but then if we have to substitute it here in our equation i'll use r23 we have to take it in meters so i'll use r23 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters then multiplying by 10 to the power minus 2 will make it turn into meters otherwise intrinsically r23 i'll take in centimeters so f21 f21 we already know we already found that f21 is 34.4 newtons okay so this one is 34.4 newtons is equal now this one is gamma q2 q3 divided by r23 into 10 to the power minus 2 square remember distances in centimeters r23 we are taking in centimeters so we have to multiply by uh, 10 to the power minus 2 now uh, just substitute the values this is 34.4 this i'll take upstairs r23 squared into 10 to the power minus 4 square gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 q2 uh, now what's our q2 oh that's upstairs q2 is minus 4 and q3 is plus 4 so both of them are 4 microcoulombs both of them are 4 microcoulombs. So 4 into 10 to the power minus 6 square. Both of them are. We're just taking the values. So Q, Q2 and Q3 are both same. 4 into 10 to the power minus 6. So I square them. So solving this, R23 comes out to be, uh, I worked this out already. R23 is 6.47 centimeters. 6.47 centimeters. This is our R23. Now, with the help of R23, we'll find out X3 and Y3. Now, what is R23? Again, that is distance from this point to this point here. We need to find out X3 and Y3. Now, look here. Look here carefully. Look here carefully what we'll do. I'm drawing this here and this one. This hypotenuse is R23. This is R23. And this angle we already know is 10 degrees. Remember the angle here was 10 degrees. So it has to be same 10 degrees there. Corresponding angles. Okay. Corresponding. We found that 10 degrees upstairs. Now this much here. This much here. Let me write F23 on the other side f23 now this much here from this point to this point here is r23 cos 10 this is 10 degrees so this is also 10 degrees okay so this one is like x component of r23 
okay x component of r23 let me magnify it a bit uh, okay this is 10 degrees here so this is also 10 degrees <coughs> 10 degrees here so this distance from this point to this point here is r23 cos of 10 and this distance here is r23 sin 10 is like y component of r23 sin 10 so what is our x3 now x3 is from this point to this point minus 2 okay then from this one to this one minus r23 cos of uh, 10 is in the negative direction so we'll take a negative so x3 is this much plus this much so that is minus 2 minus r23 so x3 is equal to uh, minus 2 minus r23 cos 10 and what about the y3 y3 is from here to here uh, we already know up to this much is y3 which is 1.5 1.5 so y3 is 1.5 plus this much and this much here is r23 sin 10 3 sin of 10 from origin to this point which is the uh, y coordinate of q2 1.5 so from here to here we have 1.5 then from here to here we have r23 sin of 10 degrees so 1.5 plus uh, sin of 10 degrees so let's write that here. I'll shrink it again. Therefore, coordinates of Q3. X3 is minus 2 minus R23 cos 10, 10 degrees. So this is minus 2 minus R23. R23 is 6.47 into cos 10 substituting the value of cos 10 we get x3 is equal to minus 8.37 centimeters minus 8.37 centimeters fine and then y3 y3 is 1.5 plus r23 sine 10 sin 10 is equal to 1.5 plus r23 is 6.47 into sin 10 substituting the value of sin 10 we get uh, y3 is equal to 2.67 centimeters it is on the positive sign so plus sign so y x coordinate of particle 3 is minus 8.37 centimeters and y coordinate of particle 3 is plus uh, 2.67 centimeters fine so these this is the location of q3 such that force on q2 becomes zero force on q2 becomes zero fine that'll do